us glorify that boundlessly merciful. Let us glorify that boundlessly merciful supreme personality of Godhead, <laughs> the Prince of Raj. <laughs> To taste, to taste the intoxicating, to taste the intoxicating, ah, sweet waves of the tra of transcendental love of Krishna, to taste the intoxicating sweet waves of love for Krishna. As well, see, transcendental love for Krishna. See, that love is transcendental to these modes of nature. That's why it looks so different, so unusual, so sublime, so perfect. And see, that's why it's not about us being pure. It's about worshiping the spotlessly pure one, you know. That's that's his potency, his transcendental potency, and him and her, Radharani, Radhe, Radhe, Radhe. To taste that sweet, intoxicating nectar of transcendental love for Krishna and to distribute it to others and to and as well as to give that nectar to others. He has now appeared in the transcendental abode of Navadvi. He has now appeared in the transcendental abode of Navadvi. As Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he has now appeared. See, and so the devotees cause that reappearance of the Lord through chanting his names. See, chanting them in ecstasy. So I said, what, there's no difference between the name of Krishna and the name of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Chaitanya. See, there's no difference. And so ecstasy reveals that. It reveals that to the chanter and it reveals that to the world also. And then others begin to taste mellows also. That's why the Lord revealed this way of worship by personally relishing it himself. One who is untouched by any piety, who is completely absorbed in their religion. One who is untouched by any piety and is absorbed in their religion. Or who has never received the merciful glance of devotees or been to any holy place sanctified by them will still ecstatically dance and loudly sing, even roll about on the ground when he becomes intoxicated by tasting the nectar, the nectar of the transcendental mellows of pure love of God given by Lord Chaitanya. See, he, he gave this intoxicating nectar by tasting it. See, you can't, this is why this Raghunuga Bhakti, this spontaneous devotional platform cannot be preached without the devotee tasting it just like the Lord tasted it so he empowers his actual authorized representatives that teach Raghunuga Bhakti spontaneous devotion by practicing it themselves they have to also be able to taste this nectar that it's uniqueness okay? it's not it's about being a big guru you know big guru big big uh, big uh, sannyasi and tasting the mellows of that like there's a little bit of pride or maybe a lot, sometimes a lot of pride it's not those those are material mellows these are mellows this is 
being a real teacher of bhakti, this level of bhakti, this is where all religion is going. This is where the Vaishnava religion is going. It's got to come up beyond religion, where people abandon religion to taste these mellows of the absolute truth. <laughs> Who needs religion like this? You just go on tasting this nectar, this prem, this love. Just go on tasting this nectar and you are satisfying the Lord. You feel it here. The Lord's heart. It's our it's his heart. It's our heart. It's his heart. See, mellows. It's his actually his heart. But the devotee, see, Yoga Maya, we can experience this sharing the same heart as the Lord by glorifying the absolute truth in a, as deep as you can as deep as you can understand it or relish it. And the understanding is only by relishing it. Only by tasting this truth. Just like he did. untouched by any piety that's why anybody can come here person may be following rules of religion you know very strictly you know really sincerely and everything but if you don't meet the devotees who are overcome with ecstasy and chanting the holy names and the pastimes and the glories of the Lord you don't meet them they, then that person that is involved in in uh, impiety that's never even seen the devotees advance is quicker than you. That's how auspicious this kind of bhakti is. That's why those who are expressing this level of bhakti, tasting it before the public even, those who begin to appreciate it, they come into the kingdom first because they come and they get to see this and they develop a desire for it a hankering for it, they want to come close to the devotees because that's how you get it. It's by association, 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 appreciation. Man proposes, God disposes, right? So you see it and you think, wow, I'd like to worship God like that. That looks really wonderful. You learn about it. The devotee explains his realizations or her realizations. And it sounds like, wow, this is amazing. Why, why go anywhere else? And why not go to the top? You know, and then very quickly you start to get Bob, feeling God awakening in your heart, and then turns into ecstatic worship also. And you become a guru. You know, teaching this, spreading this to others. You know, or a witness first, you know, witnessing for a guru, then you're tasting these mellows deeper and deeper and deeper. And yeah, so much then people come to recognize and nest, make their nest in your in your tree, you know, and because you're a branch, you you know, they come nesting in your branch, branch of the Chaitanya tree. Right? Yeah, that's it. In that nutshell. Mm. One who is untouched by any piety, completely absorbed in irreligion. See, will still ecstatically dance. See, just... Yeah. Therefore, let us glorify that Lord Gora, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, not attainable by faithful performance of pious deeds. See, you can't get this by just being really pious so many people are very pious, but they're not, they cannot attain this. See, just through piety, can't attain it. Maybe you can get the association someday of a devotee, see, because that's how you attain it. It's the devotee themselves. That's why Jesus said, uh, when Jesus said to Philip, he says, you know the way, Philip, to the kingdom. You know the way to the kingdom. And Philip's looking around. 
where? Where's the way, Philip? Where's the way, Jesus? I don't know. Where is it? You're saying we know the way. He said, I'm the way. Hey, I'm the way. Hey, he, you got to be the way, man. Being the way. You know, what is that way, man? Relishing ecstasy like the Lord. It wasn't that the Lord's way? What if the Lord didn't come here and didn't teach, didn't express, then nobody would know the way because it wasn't the way was not revealed. It's like people, they come, they say, oh, don't reveal the way, don't reveal the way. The way is the devotee, man. The way is their experience and their, uh, their worship of God. See, if you just worship the Lord on a level of external bhakti, say you could be a great personality and you can even be qualified like Prabhupada to relish mellows, but you're acting in this world on the level of vaivi bhakti, on the level of ashram dharma, you're teaching that by your example. What you see is what you get because whatever Bhagavad Gita teaches, whatever a great man does, common men follow, right? So a great man is following like Moses rules, ridges, uh, and, and Bhakti Siddhanta. You're seeing with your own eyes rigid rules, regulations, and everything. And even though they're qualified, they're in their closets, you know, in the privacy of their room, relishing mellows. So what you see is what you get. They show you Vaidhi Bhakti, you follow that because they're great persons, right? See? But sometimes the order comes. See, and, and something greater comes. What is the greatest thing that the Lord came to bring? The greatest realization that's never been revealed before in this world until unless he comes here himself or his empowered representative is this kind of Vrindavan Bhakti. See, and he came relishing it. See, and whatever a great man common does, common men do. And then many people followed that example. Many people came to the ecstatic platform of worship. Because whatever a great man does, great man was Lord Chaitanya, common men follow. He was preaching that path and people followed it. Then what happened? Ah, uh, more of the other things started to be shown. After the disappearance of the Lord, this path began to recede. You know, just like the ocean recedes. See? Back into whatever, you know, people into religion. You know, people start following rules and regulations again. Even turning this Vaishnava path. Even though in the books we're worshipping all these great men in ecstatic worship, but we still can't do it until you see a living example of a devotee that is not just just tasting these mellows in the closet and coming out and teaching Vaidhi Bhakti and you're seeing, well, this is a great man teaching Vaidhi Bhakti and Varnashram Dharma because that's what they're exhibiting in this world. So that's why the exhibition of this has to be made. You have to see a devotee relishing this Bhakti and then even common people start to come and they say, oh, really? This is available? You can do this? You mean I can do this too? Yes, you can do this too. See, spiritual greed is awakened. You see, wow, look at this way of worship. Oh, I'm not qualified for that. And the devotee says, yeah, none of us is. This is Kali Yuga. The Lord has blessed this, 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 this way of worship on this fool here. So you want to worship like this? Just come into the association of these types of devotees who are exhibiting these kinds of examples.